Hello programmers! Today I want to talk about Microsoft Azure Playfab. You can go to playfab.com and this could help you if you want to do multiplayer services like having a user create a login and password and log in. If you want to save user data um, in the, like in the cloud using this service. If you want to have a leaderboard this would be a good tool. So from here you'll just go ahead and click sign up and it's free to sign up and go ahead and put in your email address and password and confirm your password and agree to the terms and if you've got the account you can click on the login page and you'll you'll have your email address and password and then click login and you can see I've tried this out with two different games so you'll see all your titles here and you can um, click on them to see more information. So I'm going to switch over to Unity so in a previous video, I had a uh, video where you've got the number of times that you've clicked on a button and that's being updated with the Unity script. I'll put a link to that tutorial in the comment section. This is not the kind of game that you normally would have a leaderboard on, but I'm going to go ahead and, and show how you would use PlayFab with this very simple, simple game. When I did a Google search for a PlayFab download for Unity, um, I come up with the LearnMicrosoft.com website and their instructions for installing PlayFab SDK for Unity. So I'm going to use this first option of clicking here to download the asset package. Open up Unity. I already have that open up in the background here. And then I can go to my downloads folder and click on the file I just downloaded and it'll have this pop-up right here. So from here um, you can decide what it is that you want. I'm just gonna leave all the defaults selected and say import. It's probably more than I need for this little example but if I expand it I guess I'll have everything I need. And my welcome to PlayFab login window popped up if this doesn't pop up for you, one of the times I tried it, this window didn't pop up, then go to Window and then PlayFab and PlayFab Extensions, and that should pop that window up for you. So I'll pause the video while I log in. And I already had an account, so I had to hit Login instead of filling out everything for a brand new account. And then whether or not this is your first PlayFab game or second or third, um, you'll get this pop up and it'll say no SDK installed. I'm just going to install PlayFab SDK. All right, it worked. Now I have to figure out uh, which game that I want to link up here. So in PlayFab, I'm going to go ahead and create a new studio and give it a name. So let's say this is maybe painless programming. I already have, I was testing this out, so I already have one painless programming, so I'll call this one painless programming too, and I'll leave PlayFab as the authentication provider and save that studio, and then I can create a new title within that studio. So I've, I've tried out quite a few things, but down here I'm going to go ahead and we can add a new title if we want or we can just use this title right here they've got a title my game that seems like a perfectly good one to use so i'm going to go ahead and edit the title information and let's call this button click game so button clicked i don't have a website url or an image here so i'll just save the name of that all right so this is what i want to hook in so i will change the studio to the new one I created, the Painless Programming 2, and I will change the title ID to button clicked, and then I'm done. Alright, I added a new empty object here, and I renamed it instead of Game Object, I said Game Manager, and I added a new component and new script, and name that script PlayFab Manager. So you can see I've attached it right there. Now I'm going to edit the code for the PlayFab Manager. All 
Right, so the code you're given to start with has the start and the update function. We don't need an update function, but we are going to create a few other functions. So I am going to create a function to log in. I'll just do void login. And then the PlayFab login functions, a lot of the PlayFab functions have a function that you want to run if it's successful, if a command's successful, and one that you want to run if it's not successful. And you look at the tutorials, and they often call it something like on success and on failure or on error. So I'm going to have two functions, one for what happened if you are successful, and the other for what happens if you're not successful. Let me use the right PlayFab libraries, so the client models. And here I'm just going to do, for now, just a, a debugging statement saying success. And I'm going to clone it and say failure. And we could fill that in later if this was more than just a hello world type of PlayFab example. And this is going to be, a, instead of a login result, we're going to have a PlayFab error. So we're using PlayFab, and instead of success, it'll be failure. But we're going to do an anonymous login where they don't actually have to provide any information, but it's going to... Um, figure out what device you're on and be able to tell that it's that device that was used to log in. Create a request variable and do login with custom ID request. And system info We'll figure out the unique device identifier. And then create an account. We want to set that to true. All right, that was my request object. Let's see, what does it not like about this? About custom ID. All right, once we have that request object, we can call the PlayFab client API login with custom ID and pass the request. And our function for on success and the function for on error. And go ahead and save. And every time we're in the start, that's when we're going to go ahead and log in. All right, so we're all done with the code for the PlayFab Manager script. We'll go ahead and hit Run, and we're going to keep our eye on the console to see if we have those messages that we had put in the script so that there would be a message for either success or failure, depending on whether or not you're able to do that anonymous login. And I'll go ahead and hit run. And bam, we see the success message. And the instart message, that was from our other script. Um, let me find the other script. Every time we clicked on the button, we were going to be running this other script here. This was set up in the other tutorial. And I can take a look at that script, that test script. And here's our instart. So, cool, looks like it's working. Now let's go to the PlayFab website and see what it records when somebody's playing our game. So if we go back to the PlayFab website and we look under the Painless Programming 2 and the game button clicked, I'm going to look under Players to see who's played my game, and I'll hit Search. And this is the last time somebody played my game. I've only had one player, which is not a surprise. Let me just go ahead and go back in 
and I'm going to play it again. And I am the same player, so it's still going to show one player, but I could look at the timestamp and see if it updated the timestamp. Um, and here I look at it, it's 9.15 p.m. The play fab is going to be on a different time zone. Select players, search, and there's that one player, 4.15. Um, so there's a different time zone there. Uh, if you want to change the time zone, go under your profile and under my profile, there's a pull down menu for time zones. So here you can figure out which of the many time zones you want to have. All right, I'm going to do one more thing with PlayFab, and that is put some title data in. Some, so one of the advantages of PlayFab is that you can edit some information through PlayFab and pull it into Unity to the game, and you don't require a new re-release every time you want to change some text or options or whatever. So from my button click game, that title, I'm going to look under the engage category for content and click on title data. And from the title data, if this is the first time you've tried to add anything, you'll see the new title data here. And we're going to be adding some key value pairs. Let's say um, I'm going to add something like, you know, uh, points per click. And I'll have a value of it's maybe five points for every click. And we'll go ahead and hit save. And the goal is to pull that information into Unity. So I'll go back to Unity. Okay, I'm going to edit my PlayFab Manager class and add a new function. And my new function, and I got this um, by looking at the PlayFab documentation online. I can put a link in the comment section. But I found a function, get uh, client get title data. And again, this was from the, the Learn Microsoft website. So in the quick start guide, they said, well, here's a function you can use for getting the client data. So I took that exactly the way it is. And let's look at the code and walk through it. So I've got just the debugging statement saying we're getting the client data. We're calling that function. And then we're going to go ahead and call this API function get title data. And we have a new request. And we're looking for the key that we're looking for. This should match up with our key value pair that we were. So it was something like points per click. And I can double check in PlayFab. So we're looking for that. And if we don't find it, we'll print this debugging statement saying there's no points per click data. If we do find it, we will print that just to the console. And we could also use it to update something in this in this scene, but for now I'm just going to use it and print a debugging statement. All right, and then we have to call this function. You want to call this function only if you're sure you were successfully logged in. So on the on success function, I'm going to go ahead and add a call to that client get title data. All right, save our changes to the script and we'll jump back to Unity give it a try. I'll hit run. And I'm going to click the button a few times. I can already see in the console that it was successfully able to get the client title data and that it knows that the points per click is five. So I could actually update that if I had a high score here, which I think I should add for my next video. All right, we've barely scratched the surface on PlayFab, but it's pretty easy to use as you can see. Good luck, happy programming.